I'm Cindy with Earth Science Resources and today we're speaking with Andrew Munoz. He is a senior geophysicist at Ensign Natural Resources. And my name is Andrew Munoz. I'm the geophysicist for uh, Ensign Natural Resources, uh, which is an oil and gas exploration company. I'm currently living in Houston. Uh, I'm a native Houstonian and I have two daughters. Uh, I like doing active things with my family outdoors, uh, running and hiking and um, just generally being outside. Um, you know, I'd say I'm a naturally curious person. Um, you know, I like to pick up new hobbies all the time and activities and skills. And, um, you know, I'm just a, I think a, a pretty normal natural scientist. So my job as a geophysicist is to help my team understand the subsurface, miles underground, remotely. So our goal as an oil and gas exploration company is to drill wells into deep rock that contains uh, very small pores, smaller than you would see even in concrete, which holds oil and natural gas. Uh, because we don't have a picture of the underground, I use tools like seismic data to build a three-dimensional model of the rocks and the fluids deep down in the earth. And we drill our wells based on that model. So seismic data is a lot like sonar. It uses really strong sound waves, uh, kind of like a bat would use when, to see where they're going to create a picture. And the way that we get that data is we actually drive really big trucks on the ground and shake them really hard and have a bunch of microphones laid out that pick up those sound waves as they reflect off rocks really deep down and come back up. And so we can use this information and process this information to build these pictures. So I take all this data and I, I leverage this information to figure out, you know, what are, what, what are the rocks made of? Um, what kind of fluids are we looking at? How deep is it? Um, what does the elevation and structure look like? You know, you might go out, go hiking uh, and see a bunch of hills and mountains. And there's actually a lot of different structure like that buried underground. So we have to know all, the, all that structure is to drill uh, wells into it and to uh, not miss when we're trying to find uh, a specific target with the oil and gas that's really deep. So we can use all this information to help optimize and figure out uh, where we want to put our wells. So. You know, I, I really like this exploration aspect and this idea of uh, kind of hunting into the unknown and um, mapping out things that people have never seen before and putting my own mark on it. You know, there's a bit of an, even though this is a very scientific, uh, very math oriented field, there's a bit of an art to it too, which is, which is kind of, which is kind of beautiful because you can really put your own mark on everything that you do. So I find this to be a lot of fun. Um, you're always looking at something new. Uh, you're working with big integrated teams to solve these complicated problems. So geophysics in general is just a lot of fun. And I think that working in the oil and gas industry, I just get, you know, you have, you get a lot of backing and money to, to go and, and explore and do these really interesting projects. journey with geoscience began pretty far back, uh, all the way back to high school, really. Um, and I would say that most of my experiences in science, in, uh, in geoscience specifically, were molded by extracurricular activities, surprisingly enough. I mean, a lot of people get interested from a class or, um, I mean, I had a few teachers along the way that um, helped drive my passions, but really, the, the activities that I was involved in, in all the way back to high school really kind of shaped my perspective. And so the first thing I'd mentioned was, uh, I, I was active in this science competition called um, National Ocean Sciences Bowl and did this for three years in high school. And of course, being that you're, it's competition about uh, oceanic science, you're gonna learn a lot about geology, the geology of the ocean floor, uh, the physics of, of waves and what goes on with plate tectonics and in the ocean. So this exposed me early to a lot of geology that a lot of people would, wouldn't get to see in high school. So that immediately got me interested in, in geology and physics. And so right away, um, when I went to college, my first stop for college was at University of Texas at Arlington. Uh, I was studying geology and physics. 
and they didn't have a geophysics program there. So I sort of supplemented by trying to double major. Um, and, you know, I had focused a lot on extracurriculars in high school. I did ocean ball, I did theater, I did a few other, a few other things on the side. And so uh, my focus wasn't completely on my grade. So, you know, UT is a great school, but, you know, I wasn't, uh, I was more trying to um, try to figure out what I liked and what I did in high school. And I think when I got to college, I spent a lot more time focusing on, on the academics. And so I, I learned, you know, that I had some great teachers in math and calculus, and I learned a lot in those classes, which helped me build my foundation to, to being a geophysicist. And um, once I decided I really wanted to do geophysics specifically, I started looking at other schools that had those programs and had those classes. And um, Texas A&M was one of those. And so I, I decided to, to apply there and I ended up getting into the geophysics program for the undergrad, for undergraduate. So after two years at UTA, um, I transferred to a &M. And in between that, um, I actually went to a camp called the Summer of Applied Geophysics Experience. Um, I think it was a little young for this camp. Uh, I was a sophomore in college and most of the students there were, were in, the, uh, uh, in their graduate school. But nonetheless, I, um, I learned a lot there. I mean, I got hands-on experience with uh, real geophysics projects. I learned about seismic data, uh, which I had mentioned. I also learned about other geophysical techniques that use electromagnetics, that use gravity, um, and you can actually take these measurements, uh, these forces that you learn about in you know, your basic physics classes, physics classes, and um, do the same thing you would do with seismic, where you actually map out uh, these things, the properties that you might be looking for, right? whether you're looking for water or minerals, you know, that you might try to mine, um, or if you're trying to look out, you know, from a satellite, um, all of these, all of these things are, are geophysical measurements. And this field camp was pretty comprehensive and taught me a lot, uh, a lot of, gave me a lot of hands-on experience at actually getting the data, processing the data, um, but at the same time, it was just fun. You know, this is one of those extracurricular activities where I made contacts for many years that um, I was able to leverage and, and, and use and um, is really useful. So at A&M, um, I spent, I was in the geophysics program and I took every class that I could. I was really interested in learning all about geophysics, about every aspect of it. Uh, to me, it was the whole subject area was fascinating. Um, and in fact, I thought I was going to go into more of a potential fields, geophysics, which is more the study of the magnetic field and gravity fields and using that to, to map, map things out um, and even the and even electromagnetics fields. And, um, and when I started uh, looking at potential career opportunities, uh, I got really interested in oil and gas. And I took a dev I took an internship uh, over the summer with uh, Devon and uh, Devon Energy when they were used to be in Houston. And I started getting really interested in seismic and geology through this internship. Um, but it really kicked off in my last year when I when I went to uh, Newfield Exploration, which is where I started my career. And um, at Newfield, uh, I think the thing that was the most important was I had a fantastic mentor. And he really opened my eyes to how useful seismic data was and how interesting the field of geophysics could be. Um, he was also fantastic at connecting me with people and just expanding my, my growth in general um, as a budding geophysicist. Um, so I think those mentors are critical you know, early on. From there, uh, once I got that love for oil and gas and um, geophysics in general, I, I, I took my next step going to Carl School of Mines uh, I found a great mentor there, uh, Dave Hale, who was um, who I got to work with and I, I got my master's under and taught me a lot about uh, programming and just gave me a lot of great problem solving skills. And, you know, that that gave me a big leg up when I started working in Denver for, for Newfield. I, I kept doing internships every summer. Those internships were critical, like, uh, building my network and uh, learning more about oil and gas while uh, you know, not having to shoulder a ton of responsibility and being able to just learn and be a sponge and, and grow um, and see how a business is run. 
So I worked for about a year in Denver and they, uh, this is very common in oil and gas to see up and down cycles. And in, in 2014, 2015, we saw one of these down cycles and they actually closed the Denver office. So I was uh, moved, uh, my wife and I to Tulsa, um, Oklahoma. And there I spent about a year working with the Oklahoma operations team. And I just, again, learned more about a, a new field, a new area and got to experience a new city and make you know completely different friends and and that was that was a lot of fun and finally um, the extent of the downturn it continued to hit the company so they closed that office as well and consolidated everybody to houston um, which i was okay with because i am from houston so uh, that was an easy enough move for me and uh, this is the heart of the industry so uh, i moved down here and got to uh, work on an exploration team where i got to see uh, lots of the assets at, that the company owned, lots of potential assets that we were evaluating and I got to keep honing my skills. Um, and then I got to a point where I just decided that I wanted to learn more about the business, um, learn more about finance and I just wanted to be more independent. Uh, I wanted to have the ability to um, you know, set my own schedule when it came to what I did in geophysics and uh, I wanted to be able to really help grow a small budding company. So that's why I, when I jumped over to Ensign um, after uh, for a few years in Houston. And, uh, and now I've been able to be, you know, now that I'm in a, in a more experienced capacity, uh, I have a lot more independence and uh, being a geophysicist, you know, I have a lot of uh, influence on where wells go and, you know, how we drill them and um, I help uh, with the analytics because of my programming experience. And so I think that, you know, I've, I've taken a, an interesting path that's been very focused on geophysics, but I've tried to learn a lot along the way so that I can um, step out and take on any role that is, that is thrown at me um, in addition to, you know, what I, what I would normally do with the, with the seismic data. And um, I think that's the benefit of being a geophysicist. You sort of become a jack of all trades. You're, you're trained in a lot of different really critical skills. Um, and I think that makes your life very interesting and makes your job very interesting. A lot of advice, but I'll try to keep it brief. Um, I think, first of all, I would try to look at every available opportunity open to you, um, whether that's an extracurricular activity, whether that's access to a great mentor, whether that's the opportunity to ask questions, uh, do internships. I think just the opening yourself up to experiences, even if they don't seem like they're kind of in your path or in your plan, opening yourself up to new experiences can really open doors for you and can give you a lot of knowledge that you wouldn't even realize you had until, you know, you're into your career. Um, you know, I think an important thing I wish I would have learned early on um, or spent more time learning. I was very science math focused. Um, I really liked the facts and I liked, you know, investigating. I do wish I'd been a little more practical in, in, in what I picked up in terms of like finance and business. Um, I think it's important for everybody. It doesn't matter what career you're in. It doesn't matter if you're going to be a scientist, if you're going to be a salesperson, if you're going to be whatever. I think any career that you choose, you should have a, at least a basic understanding of the way the financial world works, um, of how to invest and spend your money. Um, and I think a lot of people get in trouble early in their careers because they don't understand that. Um, and I think that's something just spend a lot of time, spend a lot of time learning and, um, and, you know, asking questions about, um, other than that, you know, find mentors all along the way. I can say every, every important step in my life, um, professionally, uh, has been guided by a mentor. And I think that that, um, no matter where you're at, I think that's important. You know, I can think back to my first internship where I was, I had mentioned, you know, Doug Cook, he was the most, probably the most vital person in, in putting my career forward, introducing me to hundreds of people and, and giving me all kinds of guidance and still to this day who I can call anytime to go to lunch and, uh, or give me help with something. 
And um, to, you know, I've, I've had managers, I've had uh, petrophysicists, I've had geologists, I've had, um, uh, you know, all, all kinds of uh, geophysicists, different, different disciplines who have uh, kind of helped shape and mold my perspectives. Um, the, I guess the last thing I would say would be uh, to be introspective. Um, another underrated feature in the professional world is um, your EQ or your emotional intelligence. And I think it's really important to look at yourself, um, look at how you behave and interact with others. I'm a really high performance person. I can be really intense sometimes. Uh, so I have to, you know, I've learned to how to work with it within a team and how to be, you know, less of an individual and more of a team member. And you know, there's lots of ways you can do that. Some people are more team oriented already, but I just think that knowing yourself, um, knowing how you interact with others, I think that's going to propel you really far uh, in your career more than you would think. Um, it, it can be just as important as uh, your hard skills, as your your science skills, your math skills, uh, your behavioral skills are, are really important to, to hone to. Andrew, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks again for your time. You too, Cindy. Thanks a lot for bringing me on.